Hey guys, what's up? It's Ben, back with another video, and today we're gonna be looking at how to edit photos inside Lightroom Mobile, which is a free mobile app. Basically, it's the mobile version of the editing suite that I use on PC to edit with. So we're gonna be focusing on, you know, if you're editing photos on your phone, you probably don't have a camera, you probably just have a phone. So this is more for the, you know, the average car enthusiast that takes photos of their car on their phone and then, you know, this is just sort of, you can just spice them up a little, make them a bit better. Uh, we can actually improve them a lot from what the, you know, just the normal Instagram filters are or anything like that. So yeah, we're gonna dive into that today. So I'll chuck my phone up on the screen, the screen recording here, and we can walk through all the different features of the app and everything together. All right, so we're here now inside of uh, Lightroom Mobile. This is all the photos that you've imported and we're just gonna look through all the features and just how I would edit these photos if I had taken them. And I actually took uh, one of these photos here and sometimes I do take photos on my phone if I don't have my camera on me or if it's of my car you know, and I'm just like out for a drive. I don't usually take my camera with me. But sometimes I take photos on my phone and I give them a bit of an edit before I chuck them on my Instagram story. Anyway. Let's get started here. This is Grant's uh, 500 kilowatt Altezza. He was in one of the previous videos where we reviewed your guys' cars. I got quite a few submissions, so I'm not showing everyone's photos. Cool, so the first thing that I do with any photo is sort out the crop. So say we're posting to Instagram, the best crop ratio for Instagram is four by five vertical. So do that, you just click on the crop button, come down here and select four by five. And then this photo is a little bit off, so we're just going to rotate it a bit. And it's a tiny bit off center, so we're going to bring in that side a little bit. Hey, it's a pretty good photo for just inside a, um, a car show, it looks like. And that's a really sick idea, taking the bonnet off at the show, that's really cool. Especially with that fat turbo, look at that. Cool, so we've cropped the photo to how we want it cropped for Instagram. And then we're going to come over to light. I'm gonna lower the exposure a bit for this because later on I'm gonna actually just brighten up the engine bay since that's the sort of the main point of the image. We wanna draw the eyes into the engine bay. Um, so I'm gonna lower the overall exposure. There's already a fair bit of contrast in this image. It's not too flat, so just up the contrast a little bit. I'm gonna lower the highlights a little bit and lowering the highlights just means lowering the brighter areas of the image. Same with the shadows, pretty self-explanatory. You're just raising or lowering the shadows in this case. I'm going to sort of just leave them how they are because the overall shadows are fine, but we're gonna brighten the ones up that are in the engine bay. Or at least for this case, you don't really need to touch the whites or the blacks. Those are the pure white or black parts of the image. So the most, um, the most white parts and the most black parts. So if you crush the blacks, you get a really, you know, like the darks are really, really dark. If you lift them up, it looks kind of faded. And you know, just, just depends on what style you're going for. Usually, um, you know, crushing the whites down like that looks a bit weird. But yeah, we're just gonna leave those too. So we can come into here into the tone curve as well. And we have the overall tone curve. So if you imagine the bottom left of this graph is um, the blacks and the top right of it is the whites. And then so in between we have the mid-tones and all in between there, right? So you can set your points here like I've done and you can just raise those shadows a bit manually. And this is just a more precise way of raising and lowering those highlights, shadows, things like that. So for this image, I might just raise those mid-tones a little bit. And that's kind of bringing out a bit of the detail in the engine bay. Actually, yeah, I quite like this. So I'm going to lower the whites in the image because that gets a lot of that reflection off the roof of his car which is kind of distracting the eye a bit so I'm going to bring those down and then in your curve tool here as well you have um, the RGB curve so red green blue you can decide the levels for each color as well right so every color is made up of well with the RGB color scheme is made up of red green and blue so if we can add red to the shadows of the image or we can take it away and if you know you add it it's going to add red take it away it's going to be the opposite which is blue you know we're just going to leave those how they are because the colors in the image are pretty sweet what i usually do to start off my photos just to um get the white balance set as you can see this little eyedropper tool here and click that and so when you're using this you want to find the most neutral part of the image right so the, the the most color neutral part of the image so you wouldn't put it over the red because then the entire image is going to go blue you wouldn't put it over blue because the entire image is going to go yellow so this tool is just helping you find the color balance where it just looks natural basically it's not too warm and it's not too cold it's just level do me a favor please get out of here it was actually pretty good how we had it initially you know sometimes you might need to come in here into the temp and just make that down a little bit and just 
down a touch there. So we don't really need to touch anything more here. I'm not gonna bring the vibrance up because that's mostly just bringing that blue carpet out. So in terms of the effects here, this is where you kind of need to be careful and not go too overboard. So, you know, texture, you can really bring out the texture of something. The opposite of that is just softening it. So yeah, I don't think we're gonna put any texture in this image. We're gonna put a little bit of clarity. As you can see, I think what clarity does is it just sharpens the areas of contrast. So it sharpens the edges of areas with high contrast. So it sort of just makes it pop more. You can see that there. Um, we'll give it a little bit, but not too much. We just want to make that engine bay sort of stand out a bit. Dehaze, mm, maybe just a little bit. And you know, that's pretty, um, that's pretty self-explanatory. You drag it down, it's really hazy. You slide it up and it's just really punchy, but we don't really need that for this image. Vignette, a lot of people like to go really hard on the vignettes like that, but we don't really need it. Um, you know, the way that we're going to edit this soon, it's going to draw the eye into the engine bay and it's actually, like, it draws it into the engine bay quite well anyway. So if you wanted to add some grain to your photo for whatever reason, maybe you're trying to make it look like a film photo, you can add some grain, but I'm not going to do that here. Now sharpening is another one where there's a very fine line. So I always sharpen uh, my image is quite a lot, especially for Instagram. You know, if you just upload a photo to Instagram without adding any sharpening, the compression and in the Instagram algorithm is going to really soften up that image. And so we just need to add a little bit of sharpening, not much at all for iPhone photos, because they're actually pre-sharpened uh, in the camera. We'll just add a tiny bit there. The image is a tiny bit noisy, so we're actually just going to add some noise reduction and that's just gonna soften, it's just gonna get rid of the noise basically. So if there's a dark area and it looks a bit grainy, it's just gonna take some of that out. So that's pretty much it for the details tab. Uh, let's go over to optics. We wanna remove chromatic aberration. I'm not sure if a lens correction will really do anything for this, but chromatic aberration, you might have seen it before. It's basically on there, you know, in some of your photos there's a bit of a purple or a green tint on the edge of, um, you know, high contrast areas at the edge of lines or something like that. So that just gets rid of that. Does a pretty good job. Cool. So now that we've done our base sort of edit, you can see um, if you hold down your finger on the screen, you can see the before and the after. So the image is a bit darker. It's got a fair bit more contrast and it's sort of bringing the eye towards the engine bay more. What we're going to do now is we're going to get our selective tool. We're going to create a new radial gradient here. And in the engine bay, we're just gonna make that cover the whole engine bay. And then we wanna feather that out a lot. So feathering, that means that your the line is just faded. So if you see here, if we left it on 10%, it would be almost a perfect circle. And if we feather it out, it's just um, you know flowing better. So we're gonna come over to light, and then we're gonna increase the exposure. And that's just increasing the exposure within that circle. So that's really cool. You can make something stand out. And then what we're going to do as well to amplify it even more is we are going to create another mask. What we're going to do is we're going to invert that by clicking that button just, um, just above the trash button. And that inverts it. So as you can see, everything in the red is selected. It's selecting everything except that original mask. And then we're going to come over to light and bring the exposure down on everything else. And that's gonna make it look like the engine bay is almost glowing. So that looks really good. So there we go, that's looking really good, I think. One more thing I will do is I'll come back into color and then we're gonna go into the color mix here. So this is where you can decide, you know, if you wanna, for example, go to the blues and you wanna take down the saturation of the blues. So as you can see the carpet and that car in the background, the blues are really getting sucked out of that. So I'm actually going to take it down a little bit. We don't want the car in the background to look too unnatural, but I'm going to take those blues down a little bit and we can also adjust the hue of that if we want to, but I think we'll pretty much leave it as it is. And then we can go through here. Say we want that engine bay to be pink. You can make it pink, uh, but we'll keep it as it is that really nice red. I love how that engine bay looks. It just stands out so much. And then we're going to increase the saturation of that uh, rocket cover there. So as you can see before, boom, it's just your eye is really coming into that image there. One last thing that I will add is split toning. So if you come in here into effects and you click the split toning button on the top right, this is where you can basically add 
a color tint to the highlights and the shadows. So we're just gonna play around with this for a bit and as you slide it up and down like that, that's just gonna increase the saturation. A little bit of aqua in the car there is gonna sort of just make it look a bit better. And then in the shadows, let's see. You know, in terms of color theory, you wanna have opposing colors. So if you have orange and blue, say like the highlights are orange and the shadows are blue or the other way around, you know, they usually complement each other. So tiny little bit of orange there into the shadows. There we have the final image looking really good. It's really drawing your eye into the engine bay. That color's really popping out. And yeah, it's looking real good. So if you hold down your finger again, you can see the before and after. Before, after, and that's looking really good. I'm quite happy with that. So then to save our photo as a new file on our phone, we're gonna click the little uh, fucking <laughs> export button, the square of the arrow coming out of it, at the top there, export to camera roll, and then that'll render that photo, so that'll save the original, and then save a new file with all the settings and everything on there. And then you're ready to upload to Instagram. I really like this shot here of this uh, old school BMW. I can't actually tell if this was taken on a phone or a DSLR, so if it was taken on a phone, it's a really good shot, man. Um, if it was taken with a DSLR, I'm kind of cheating for this video, but oh well. Let's give this one a quick edit here. So first thing I'm gonna do is zoom this in by a lot. And we're just gonna line that car up right in the middle of the image. We're gonna change that to a four by five crop ratio. We come in here to light. I'm gonna really up the highlights here. Now we could bring these whites up, but I think they're gonna get a bit too overexposed. So we're gonna do that. And actually I'll give this one a bit of a, we'll try a few different styles in this video. I'll give this one a bit more of a faded look. So I'm gonna bring the blacks up and that's gonna make it so the pitch blacks aren't pitch black, they're more of a dark gray. Some people like to crush the black, some people like to leave the photos quite faded and low contrast, sort of misty look. So I'm not gonna muck around with the tone curves really much in this. I'm just gonna give it a bit of a quick one. I'm gonna lower the white balance a little bit just to make it a bit more blue. I'm gonna bring a tiny bit more purple into the image. I'm gonna give it a tiny bit of clarity. And we're gonna come into the split turning here. This photo is taken in daytime, as you can see by the light coming in from the outside in the sort of middle top right photo there. But it's in an underground garage, so it kind of looks like nighttime, which looks really cool. So I'm gonna give it sort of a dark bluey tint. So we're just gonna give the highlights a little bit of blue and then the shadows here we're gonna come in with also a bit of blue but a slightly different tone and just give it a tiny little bit so as you can see in the bottom right of the screen there we got 14 percent selection on the highlights and seven percent opacity on the shadows there so just a tiny bit there's some photographers that shove the split toning up and they make it look really good um, that's when you really need to know your color theory what colors complement each other Someone like Craven is incredible at that. Pretty much it will give it a little bit of sharpening. Uh, remove the chromatic abrasion just in case there are any there. And we might need to rotate this a little bit. Yeah, it wasn't completely straight. And then something cool that we can do on this image actually is we can use this healing brush. So basically what this does is, it even says on the screen, you know, we can remove spots, power lines, other distractions. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna remove the letters from the license plate. Grab the brush, where the fuck did it go? So we're gonna bring the feathering up a bit and then the size of the brush will bring down. And we're just gonna paint over this and what that's gonna do is it's gonna fill it in with black from somewhere else in the image and it didn't do it perfectly so sometimes you have to just adjust it a bit like that and there we go. We have no license plate anymore. Cool, so we've now show you how to edit a photo sort of indoors at a car show like Grant's car. Then we looked at sort of a more nighttime shot like uh, that BMW. And then I'm gonna show you guys how to edit just for the last one. We're only gonna do three today, otherwise the video is gonna be like an hour long. This was an early sunset sort of shot, so about an hour before sunset of Campbell's Widebody 86. And this is a really good example of how you can really make some colors pop. You know, we've already got some great colors in the image here. Honestly, like lighting is everything. You can take a photo, you know, on the most expensive camera in the world with crap lighting, and it's gonna look worse than an iPhone picture with really, really 
good dynamic lighting or an amazing location, you know? Don't think that just because you only have a phone that you can't take amazing photos, because you can, especially with these new iPhones. So I'm gonna come in here, grab my four x five crop for Instagram. Cool, there we go. Bring down the highlights a bit. They're a little bit overexposed. Up the shadows to get some of the detail out of the back of Campbell's car there. And then I'm actually gonna just crush the blacks a little bit. And you might be thinking like, oh, you just upped the shadows on the back of the car. Why are you crushing the blacks? Well, the shadows aren't just the really dark part, aren't just the darkest parts. They're just like the darkest 50% of the image and the blacks are like the really, really dark parts. So I wanna make sure that the really, really dark parts stay really dark, but then the overall darker parts, they wanna lift them up a bit to show a bit more detail. Cool, and I actually, I'm gonna lower down the whites here as well, just to bring in a bit more of that door, the reflections on it, and a bit more of the detail in the sky. I think that the temperature's pretty good here. It's a nice warm temperature. I wanna keep it that way. We're gonna add a tiny little bit of purple, and we're gonna bring up the vibrance a little bit. We'll leave the saturation where it is. I prefer to do the saturation on each color rather than just doing the saturation overall. And then if we come in here to the color mix tab, we can see the true color of Campbell's car. It's actually a nice, dark red, almost purple. Every image he uploads to Instagram, he sort of photoshops it to make it look a bit more orange, but it's just not the case, like, just joking, man. Uh, we don't really need to fuck with the reds there. We might just make the oranges a tiny bit more red, um, because I know the color of Campbell's car and it's not quite as bright orange as that. It's more a darker burnt orange, as some may say. We're gonna increase the saturation of the oranges there a bit. And then the yellows, we're gonna bring up the yellows on the grass there. We're also gonna make the yellows a bit more green because as you can see that grass there was really old. So we're gonna make those yellows a bit more green. And then just to balance that out a bit, we're gonna make the greens a tiny bit more yellow. Over in the blues here, we're gonna leave the blues how they are. And then we're just gonna bring down the saturation of the blues a fair bit. We're gonna give it a little bit of clarity, just a tiny bit. Give it a little bit of sharpening, tiny bit of noise reduction. Even though there isn't really any noise, it just sort of makes the darker parts a little bit softer. I usually give um, most of my images a tiny bit of noise reduction just to make them a little bit softer. We'll come back to the effects here and go into our split tone. So as I was talking about before, you can use opposing colors to really complement each other in an image. So we're gonna do that here. We're gonna come into the highlights and we're gonna give the highlights a fair amount of orange. Then we're gonna come into the shadows and give the shadows a bit of blue. Just a little bit. As you can see the shadows, as that blue comes in, it's sort of getting a bit faded. So just there. So we've got 23% opacity for the oranges and the highlight and 14% opacity for the blue and the shadows. And that sort of opposing colors, they just work really well together. It's, it's got a vibe to it now, you know? Yeah, that's pretty much it for this image. We can export that and we're good to go. Cool, so that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. I hope this inspired you to go out and take some photos, no matter what you have, if, even if it's just a iPhone or a android but regardless if you have any questions put them in the comments below or if you want a quicker response dm me on instagram with any questions you have about photography or editing and i'll be happy to answer them you can get really really good photos on your phone just go out i like this is how i find my spots on instagram as i just drive around with my own car and look for cool spots take photos of my car in those spots if i like the photos i'll mark the spot on google maps now i just have like a plethora of spots around the city so explore well <laughs> once we're allowed out go out and explore and yeah most of all just have fun with it you know it's a really fun experience learning how to do all this stuff if you're not subscribed already subscribe below like the video if you enjoyed it and i will see you guys next week for another one later